Fibonacci projections and extensions. This is part two of a two-part module looking at Fibonacci. Please do check out the Elliott Wave tutorials too, which are in the links in the description below. If you would like to know more, we have a full 48 module super masterclass here designed for anyone to trade, analyze and invest in the stock market. We are literally taking this one small part of this and explaining it, but really to really uncover how these stock markets work and how they operate and how they move and to understand price action and to perfect your techniques Really, there is nothing better which is out there. So, let's go into extensions now. So, left-hand side of your screen, trend-based FIB extension tool. It looks something like this. We are once again going to make sure we are always on the log scale and we are ticking this box here. We need to make sure we're always working on the log scale. These are the common ratios which I have. I'll just pause the screen here to give you guys an idea. As you can see, there's still space available for a couple more. We've mentioned these higher numbers here, the 6.8, 17.9, 11.09. Honestly, they probably don't need to be there. If I'm doing more longer term analysis, I like to have them there because it works in the same sequence as 1.618. Continue to square that number, you get these higher numbers. We've mentioned 1.1 which I always have on there. To me, it's historically been very important. It's a square root of 1.236 and every other number you've probably seen before on the previous video. We've also mentioned 3.618, which technically isn't the right jump from one from 2.6 one to 4.236 there, there shouldn't really be a 3.618 however much like 2 and 1.5 and 0 0.5 which are technically in my eyes Fibonacci ratios or numbers I have still found it to be useful enough to have it on there okay of course we have 0 and we have 1 and the usual 0.5s uh, and 0.236s okay there's still space for a few more there if you need them honestly I would only have to not get the screen too messy here because you might have candlesticks going on, horizontal lines. You just want to keep the major ones. You probably don't even need these higher number ones, but to me, they're so far into the distance, they're never really important and it just saves me having to tick those again. I usually use one color. Honestly, doesn't really matter what you do with the rest of the setup here. So, those are the ratios. Now, let's go back to our impulse because this is really the classic impulse that we need to be comfortable with. So let's get wave three to not be the shortest, something like this, let's not get an extension in, in the wave five. So we've spoken about the retracement tool of wave two. How exactly do I project the, the wave three and the wave five when all I have is the one two? Well, this is how you do it. You take the Fibonacci trend-based fib extension tool you click from the bottom of zero to the top of one that's your first click so one click second click then the third click is the bottom of your presumed wave two as you can see i was pretty close i've been doing this quite a long time basically there is a high probability or the highest probability let's say that the wave three if it is a textbook wave three and one of the waves are usually extended by the way, waves one, three, or five, it will end up, the distance anyway, the logarithmic distance will end up somewhere around the 1.618 extension relative to the wave one. That's what this means. I've basically taken this distance and I've extrapolated it up from the bottom of wave two, and that gives me high probability for knowing where this wave three is going to peter out and probably start to retrace to make a larger degree wave four. That probability is even higher if on the internals there's a one, two, three, four, five, which also pro projects to the same distance. Okay, don't forget you can have multiple fibs on multiple time frames all working together, and usually there's a lot of confluence that we will find. That gives me the area for the wave three. We've then spoken about the wave four pullback, how to get that. Now, let's just say I've nailed the top of this wave three and it pulls back here to, let's say, a 0.382. I can then project the wave five. Now, what I want to do is start all over again um, by 
taking away the tool and bringing it back. There are two ways. Well, there's three ways technically, but let's just discuss the first two ways. How do I project the way five distance when I have the one, two, three, and four? Well, here's the first way. One is you start off at zero, you go all the way to the top of the wave three, then you pull back from the top, from the bottom of wave four. So let's think about this. I've taken this entire distance, not from zero to one, not from zero to two, the entire distance from zero to two on the logarithmic scale, and I've projected that or start, brought that back down to the bottom of wave four, and I'm trying to extrapolate that distance. The wave five can often end up around the 0.618 Fibonacci extension tool or projection from the distance 0 to 3. Not the 1 to 1, because obviously that would mean the wave 5 is equal to the entirety of 0, well, 1, 2, and 3. We're not saying that. The wave 5 is a projection of the distance 0 to 3 from 4. That's the first way. Let's just put a little marker there, just so we have an idea of how we get the first way. The second way is to project this the same way as you would do the wave three, zero to one, but rather than starting from the two, because we already have the three, we're gonna extrapolate this and extend it or project it from the bottom of wave four. And here we can find two things. Number one is a one-to-one -one correlation between the wave one and the wave five, or if it's extended, it can be upwards of the 0.618. That would be the second way. So automatically, I've got a zone here between 2.1 and 2.15 on this hypothetical example here for an area where the wave five is gonna peter out. And the third way, the less commonly used way is to project the wave five from the wave three, basically, right? Because we know from Elliott Wave, it tells us there is a rule of alternation, but also there's a rule of equality. Usually one of the three impulse, two of the three impulsive waves, i.e. one, three, and five, are going to be equal. So the only other way left is to say this wave five is relative to the wave three, in which case, rather than starting zero to one, we start from the bottom of two, upwards from three, then we come back down on ourselves and we project that from the bottom of wave four. Usually, in that case, we are also looking for a one-to-one -one relationship. And notice that actually ends up here as well. And this is how we design a confluence or a zone to know when things are petering out. Now, if this level tags up with other important reference points that we are mentioning, and there's volume signatures, and there's horizontal levels, and liquidity areas, and order blocks, and volume profile references, you could say it's a very high probability this impulse is gonna end up petering out around that level, profit taking is gonna take place, and we're gonna undergo a significant retracement. That is how you project your targets for a standard impulse working both up and down. Let's now take the ABC, the expanded flat scenario. How do I project this C leg? Well, we start from zero with the same tool, come back down and I was also one click, two click, third click, okay? I am if effectively projecting this distance and extrapolating that from the point of B, right? So is this distance moved over effectively and coming out of B right? The one-to-one -one will obviously be shorter than A. Why is that? Because the B was higher than the point of zero. That would be a truncated irregular flat. Usually I'm looking for a one-to-one. -one. If it extends, the most it's ever going to extend is a 1.618. Just like this B wave can't extend more than 1.618 off the top of the star of the flat pattern. I don't like my C leg extending more than 1.618 projection relative to the point A. So I'm looking at targets as absolute minimum one-to-one, -one, then I'm looking at targets somewhere around this kind of zone. 
which other level is important i would have to say it's not the 1.13 and it's not the 1.15 if you've marked this level off and the one to one I wouldn't go for the 1.5 or the 1.13. Like I said, I only have them there because historically they're important, but they're not classic levels when I'm looking for a turn. Usually, I would then go to the 1.382, then the 1.236 in that order. So these are the two most important levels I'm looking for a turn. Then I'm looking for the 1.382. Like I said, if that internal wave structure also suggests a wave five completion of this sea leg around that level that further adds confluence to the situation. That is how you project for a wave, expanded flat wave, basically. And finally, a simple zigzag, which is basically an ABC. Well, as I'm sure many of you have gathered, similar kind of thing. We start from the A, from the point zero, first click, second click, third click. We've already spoken about this wave B will usually retrace 50 to 61.8%. I'm looking, honestly, firstly, first thing I'm, lo I'm looking for is a one-to-one. -one. If it's a genuine ABC, of course, don't forget, if it's a 1.618, you might be thinking, and you're right, that might be part of an impulse down. And that's what makes Elliott Wave a little bit tricky. You can't really just take one wave in isolation. You have to know what happened a little bit before that to understand the larger wave structure. If this wave C is crashing down to a 1.618, I might think, hold on a minute, I'm not actually looking at a wave C off an ABC flat at all. I'm looking at an impulse down. That then completely changes the picture. So I don't want this C leg falling much below here. After the one-to-one, -one, like I said, I wouldn't be focused too much on this or on this. I'm looking for either 1.236 and 1.382. Then I'm looking at if there was a genuine impulse into here, that would be the retracement, and then we can go higher. And of course, if that is a wave two, it would also retrace on the larger scale around the 0.618. Look at how I got that just there. Like I said, not my first rodeo here. So this is how we develop Fib Confluence. Okay. So those are the most important patterns that you need to know, okay? The retracement patterns, the projections, and the extensions. I wouldn't worry too much about the different terms that I'm using here, retracements and extensions and, and projection. Just understand how to use these two different tools side by side. One is for a retracement, and one is to project going higher up. The last thing I will mention here is the use of negative FIBs which can sometimes be very useful, especially when you're dealing with corrections. So if we have some kind of pivot level here, let's just draw something like this. Let's just say you're part of a complex correction. In a complex correction, we can also use the simple knowledge of algo targets, which is basically one of the most important algorithms which are used or which we see in the stock market is price action, regardless of the Elliott wave, by the way, is retracing 50% um, of the previous move. Once again, this takes away Elliott wave. We're just looking at a major pivot low to a major pivot high. It's often the case we will see some reaction around the 50%. The target for that is usually a move to the 0.236. This is a very common algo play. Over time, the last three or four years especially, um, it's it's there are tricks and there are little you know um, liquidity areas which the smart money will help to take out prior to this move taking place. They know everyone knows about it now. So I've often seen the case where this this fifty percent actually come down comes down as much as the point six one eight, and sometimes there might be a bit of a a top just before the 0.236, but ultimately that is the algorithm play. I usually have a stop at the 70% for this, by the way, the 0.7, okay? 
Um, I don't see any need to retrace more than that. Like I said, because everyone knows about it now, the market has a tendency to figure things out over time. That's com completely normal. That's how markets evolve over time. Just like you have to evolve your knowledge, okay? If you don't evolve, then you die in this game. So 0.7% is usually my stop for that if I'm looking for a simple algo play. These are preset orders, by the way. Preset buy limit, preset sell stop, preset um sell target limit order at the point two two three six that's all done blind i'm not even looking at it if i'm part of a complex correction those trades will be placed automatically into in to the order book so obviously that would be your buy limit that would be your sell stop and then that would be your target there very very simple um i don't usually go for higher targets i'm looking for the higher probability which is it bounces off the 50 hits the 0.236 and then you move on to your next position. That's very easy, very common, can be done automatically. Often I'm not even looking at the screen. There's no need for me to look at it because I'm happy with my risk. Once again, risk and reward. The only thing you can control in your life is risk, especially when you're dealing with financial markets. You don't know where things are gonna go. This could shoot up another 10, 15%, no one cares. We're here to take part in low risk, high reward positions. Worst comes to worst, you're gonna lose small. But if you can find these opportunities, risk small to make win big, then you're gonna make money in the long term. It's not about how much you win or lose. It's not about your hit rate as such. It's about how much you make when you lose and how much you make when you win. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up there. That's the final algo play. And that is a quick tutorial into Fibonacci. I'm hoping you guys found this useful. Please do click on the Elliott Wave tutorial videos too if you haven't already seen those and check out the masterclass if you want i'll catch you guys on the next video